up, what's up, what's up, everybody? What's up? I am Simone Arabia. I'm Fever. And we are Spotless Minds, and this is Beats. Sneaks. And Rhymes. I hate telling good people bad news. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, the people are not ready. Okay, so Beats, Sneaks, and Rhymes is a show where we talk about all aspects of hip hop, uh, sneakers, talk about the culture, talk about lyrics. Uh, past, present, and future. All the time. All the time. Anytime. And we bring it to you at the drop of a dime. Mm. And we run. <laughs> Damn. So this is our last episode for season one. Give it up for us. Give it up for us. Give it up for us. Woo! <laughs> Out here. Uh, we need help. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, so this is our last episode for the first season. Thank you guys for rocking with us. Um, and we're going to get right into our first segment. Our first segment is the... B segment. The Beats. In this segment, we pick an album. And, and we rate it. We, and we discuss it. We rate it. We discuss it. We listen to it. We listen to it. We And we bring it to you guys. We don't listen to it on here. Because we... Because we can't pay nobody. But we bring it to you guys because we feel that this is something that you guys should be listening to. Yup, exactly. We're not going to give you nothing that we don't just... That's a waste of your time. That's a waste of your time, yeah. We don't waste time. We're going to give you hot shit. Mm. Dope shit. We're going to have more shit next season and Mm. and more dope shit. (laughs) Actual factuals. All right, so this week we are reviewing... Gangsta. <laughs> oh. One of the best yet. Man. Man. That's the shit. So for those of you <laughs> who are probably under a rock somewhere, um Gangsta dropped a new album. Um and it is it is it's Gangsta, man. It it's, is when so I first good. Yeah, it is is really it really is good. It it really is refreshing and yes. um and I, I get, I still get somewhat emotional. Like I'm hyped about the whole thing. But mm-hmm. like, you know, when they first dropped the uh, first single, and you know, now that Primo, he's he's going around doing interviews to promote the album. Right. You know, he's kind of telling you a little bit about the process and mm-hmm. how, you know, um, family and loyalty, or loyalty and family, right, um, weren't actual. Was it wasn't actually the first single. Okay. Um, Bad Name was supposed to be the first single. Mm. And, but J. Cole actually talked him into that being the first single. Okay. Um, and what a good first single it was. The, he did it. And also, he talked about how he consulted with Q Tip about how to actually keep this album under wraps. Okay. A secret. Right. So we wouldn't, you know, people wouldn't know about it. it we leave. totally didn't know. Because when, now, I'm saying all that to say, when I first heard uh, "Family and Loyalty," um, and I and I heard Guru's voice, and that it was like new lyrics, mm-hmm. like it just like blew me back. Yeah, it was just like I was in this in my just sitting there, and then it just was like, it was like yo, right. like I haven't heard him in so long. Yeah, and first off, like Gangstar is my favorite. I'm not going to say group, but my favorite MC DJ combo with the original formula of two turntables and a mic yeah. is Gangstar. Right. There's no other group that has held it down mm-hmm. in the original rap or original hip hop formula like Gangstar has. Right. And people that really know me personally know, know. that Gangstar. If you know this guy. If you know my son's middle name, then you know right. Gangstar is. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Lil Primo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but when I first heard Guru's voice, man, it, it really blew me back and it made me realize how long it's been. Yeah. And how much more that I miss it. Like, I always think of him mm-hmm. and I'll be like, yo, I miss Guru. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But hearing it, it was it made me really, really realize how much I miss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Guru. Yeah, man. But um, this album, but let's, let's yeah, cause it gets that's it gets deep with me and Gangstar. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But uh, this album is is it's so it, good. It's First of all, refreshing. the intro is like the perfect setup. Yeah, you it know is, what I mean? No doubt. 
No doubt. You got the crowd saying gang stars got to be, be the short shot. shot. Yeah. That's that shit. Yeah. It's just <laughs> And then they switch up the <laughs> it, it, and they're going through the whole yeah. gang star catalog. It's yeah. such a you know, we talk about concepts and stuff like that, but just not even, and this is not a concept album, but this the way just the whole thought process of like what are we doing for the intro and what's the first single and you know, just mm figuring out the sequencing of the songs. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, for a lot of people, really, the opening, the intro is the setup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is. And it it took me right back to Moment of Truth. It took me right back to Hard to Earn. It, took, yeah. it just took me right back there. And I was just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is about to be some stuff. You know what I mean? So I was hyped from the intro mm -hmm. and then you know then we kick off the first song and i'm in the kitchen cooking listening mm -hmm. and it's i just it's such a good album and you know i i want to say you know that premiere did such a fantastic job capturing you know guru's essence sometimes when we mm -hmm. lose our mcs and then people you know Mm -hmm. We hear music from them posthumously, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's good stuff, but you know, you can tell that they're gone. Yes. You know, sometimes uh -huh. the pairing with the the lyrics and the beats, it just mm -hmm. doesn't work. Yeah. The or, or, or the even people the... that they bring in on this or whatever. Yeah. And I just is... did not feel like that, and it's I not... I can't even imagine, you know, the 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 emotional roller coaster that uh, Premiere went through putting this together, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Missing his friend, but making sure that he wasn't missed at all. He is not, um, he is literally right there. Yeah, I know. And that's, the, <laughs> and that's the thing about it too, is just like the sound and how you write, like the sound, the emotions of whatever he did those lyrics to, whatever beats, mm -hmm. how he matched it with, with the gangstar sound. Yes. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but you know what? And that's this is not taken away from anything, but that is that is Premier's specialty. Yeah, you know what I mean. His mm -hmm. specialty is mm -hmm. building around you. You right. know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it it didn't take. It, it is just like he's really like he really did it here, and it it is just it's it's crisp and clear, yes. and you know what I mean. It don't sound like. Nothing out of the element or experimental or right. whatever. Like, why did he do this with that? Yeah, put like this person on that song. Nah, yeah, no. Nah. And Guru, just lyrically, he's sharp as ever. Yeah, you know? yeah. Exactly. Sharp it's just like ever. it's like it's you put it out now, and it's just like it ain't nothing wrong. It nothing. don't sound dated. No, it doesn't. Doesn't you sound know. like ah. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear stuff like. What's your favorite? Bad news. Bad, was it bad, bad? Bad name. Bad name. Bad name. Yeah. I mean, so I've, I went through the album twice. Of mm -hmm. course, first time just listening, and then the second time, and and I've heard bad name many times before mm -hmm. I listened to the actual <laughs> album. But my God, the the scratching on that song. It gives me goosebumps. I, I mean, yeah. it's so fire. It's so gangstar to me. That's, that's the why, thing. That's, that's what the it thing. Is. It's just him. It's just gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rapping yeah. and, and the, yeah, yeah. And that's it. And I'm not taking away from the other songs where there are other where there are features mm -hmm. and stuff or whatever. But yeah, I was just I every time that song comes on, I'm like rewind selector. Yeah. So that's probably and it's, it's like short, it's a little short, really. It's really it's like short. only one verse. It, it's short, you but know what I mean. Man. I don't know how many bars it is, but it's actually only one verse. Right. Probably about twenty bars or so, but mm -hmm. yeah. I like but, the. Uh, I'm sorry, and the joint with MOP. Mm -hmm. I love that joint. Yeah, that's good. And of course, the joint with J Cole. It's a. It's a, that's a good song. Yes. Um. It is. It, it's that's a just really, a great song. Just a great song. That's period. Just a great song. Period. Yeah. yeah. So what about you? Um, definitely bad name because it's just because like I said, the sound is so gangstar. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like it's just refreshing. It's refreshing to hear something new from Guru and just to hear that gangstar sound. Yeah. I mean we hear, you know, the the primo sound mm -hmm. with other artists, but to me it it's different. Like people compare or whether say, you know, be you know, with the whole uh 
prime with Primo and Royce the Five Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, the beats that he rhymes over don't necessarily mean don't necessarily sound like the beats that Guru would rhyme yeah. over during a Gangstar album. Right. To me, mm-hmm. maybe one or two of them, right, or three right, of them, right. or whatever. But mm-hmm. never, you know, like the whole thing. So yeah, definitely bad name. But speaking of Royce, I think my other one, my other favorite is um, "What's Real." Yeah. Um, because again, it's it's it sounds like a gang star. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they all they have their sound. Yeah. They have their what Guru used to say their formula. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it is is definitely refreshing to my ears. Um, of course, you know, family and loyalty. But those two right there, mm-hmm. uh, bad name. And what's real yeah. featuring Royce the Five Nine and uh, Group Home and Group Home, mm-hmm. yeah. Because instead of Premier actually sc- scratching, they're actually saying right. their little their phrases. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Which, Which is, is dope. dope. Yeah, Which to have so them. Dope. You know so what I'm good. saying? It was so good yeah. to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really nice to see Freddie Fox. Yes. On this. On yes. I was like, <laughs> Freddie Fox is my dude. Yeah. I mean, he. I mean, Man. listen. Punch niggas in their face just for living. That's that's the original. He is the original. Real cat. He is the original. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you doing? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's shouts what, out to Freddie Fox, before, man. Before the four. And all he never the... disappoints. Yeah. Lyrically, he just he anytime he's on anything. I know. I just be like, I yo, know. his the rest of the song might not be and, all that, but and, he's he's always he'll always give you a hot. Let's go back and give it. Yeah, but he does. But mm-hmm. from him over premiere joints all the time. Is is always a blessing, mm-hmm. yo. It and that's, always is, yo. Yeah, and you can tell, and you know, but that's the whole, the whole little group, you know, yeah, the whole little indeed. posse or whatever. Um, but man, this is such a good album. It is. If you haven't heard it, man, go out and listen. I was when when I found out that it dropped. The first person I thought of was you because yeah. I was like, oh man, he's yeah, he is. I was waiting. losing. I was mind. waiting. <laughs> I was waiting. Oh, once I first saw the, you know, the the first song and mm-hmm. the whole nine, and you I was know, like, wait a minute, what is this gonna be? Like, yeah, and <laughs> and then, you know, I even didn't know then because right. they didn't really release the news that it was going to be an album right until a little bit after that right you know what i'm saying it was just like yo gangstar got a new song mm-hmm. and then it was like two days later it was like yeah but they coming out with an album too you know what i mean it's so good yeah i'm so happy uh, and, yeah um, i'm happy for primo very happy for him man and i know this was a long time coming and it was a lot of hoops and hurdles that he had to go yeah, through a lot but of, a lot of bullshit yeah but um gangstar is still alive and and, yeah. and well and we're happy so y'all need to go listen to that word seriously you know, y'all i know y'all gang star fans yeah man you know just you know just do, because we said so because just do it so just do it and we'll be back we'll be well we'll be back, back. Mm. all right everybody and we're back and we're moving we're on to our next segment which is called the sneak segment. The sneak segment. The kicks. What's on your feet? What, what are, are those? Um, sneakers, tennis shoes, whatever. Wherever you're from, whatever you call it, this is that segment. If you still say tennis shoes, please drop a comment under yes. this video on YouTube. Yeah. And tell me and why. And tell us where you're from. Where you're from and why you still say tennis shoes. Amen. And then if you. Are if you say kicks or if you say sneakers, let us know. As let well. us know. Let why? us know. Just tell yeah. us. Just tell us why. Where you yeah. from? That's all. Boom. Wheels. You out on wheel? I don't know. What you call <laughs> um, Wheels. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this week we are reviewing the two seventy react from yeah. Nike. From um, Nike. You know. Air Max. Mm-hmm. Out here. It's the new one of the newer Air Max. Boom, boom, boom. Um, Make sure we hit all angles. <laughs> just came we're, out. We're high end production. This, this, over here. I think this may be. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, my my memory has failed me right now. Okay. But this might be the first sneaker that we did this season that may be like. Oh, new. A new sneaker. Okay. Okay. Like, like you know. Let's talk about something. It. Even though you know sneakers be new that I have, but they're still like. Like kind of like a retro, retro, yes. right? Yeah, they're retros. Mm-hmm. Thank you All for right. that word, retro. I'm, I'm Another... here. I'm here retro. to bring retro. I'm here for the vocab. Shouts out to the food. Two seventy 
Okay. Reacts. First, of, little, first our and, historian here. First and foremost, I want to tell you when I first seen these joints. Um, no, let me tell y'all the first time he's seen these joints. <laughs> It was but. like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> his eyes, his pupils dilated. <laughs> he was like this. He was doing Birdman hand rubs. Bird he, was, he was washing his hands, and he just was like, you would have swore it was the big booty chick walking by. He just it, was like, what are those? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, you know, when I always say, and, you know, shout out to my homegirl, Jennifer. She always says, if you do a double take, that means yes. Yeah. When I first saw them, I first thought it's like the old school jawbreakers. Well, I love the colors though. Mm -hmm. The colors just like you know, mm -hmm. it's, you can freak, you can you freak can a lot do of stuff. Everything with, with these, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. So that instantly was like you know, um, plus you know the red, black, and green kind of stand out to me too. Mm -hmm. It's the first three colors I see, right. and then you're gonna add the yellow one. You know, we throw that up in there culturally too. With right. uh, you know, we won't get the too gold much into that. that. Yep, the gold, true. you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you so know when, you, I mean? when did these sneakers come out? They came out July of this year. Okay. Um, this is the first colorway. Okay. They uh also have other colorways, but this is the original colorway. Okay. Um, they call these the Bajas. Baja is uh well was a school in Germany. Okay. Um, from 1919 to 1933. Um, they specialize in fine arts and uh crafts but not also but they specialize in fine arts and crafts but they also incorporated that with uh engineering and mm -hmm. um buildings so a lot of like abstract buildings um you know kind of originated i don't want to say they are their original but mm -hmm. Those creative style of okay. buildings that we kind of see, it, okay. it comes from them combining that. Um, okay. And that's why you kind of see, and they practice like asymmetrical. That's why it kind of just looks like mm -hmm. there is no, like how they cut the Nike sign off okay. or whatever. Um, hmm. Yeah, and also the colors. Right. The colorways actually, and the insoles actually represent. Okay. Um something from their school okay. like as, as far as like because each insole has a different design on the inside okay you know what i'm saying so it represents something and i don't want to get too much far into you know because that ain't the sneaker that's just exactly right. where it originated from i mean but it gets deeper if you people, guys want to look up where uh about the school about baja you can um i know it has something a lot to do with uh being radical okay. um, against Nazis and stuff like that, and the Nazis actually shut them down okay. and stuff like that um, because of... Right, because Nazis was tripping. Yeah. Right. Because of a lot of in influence and right. whatever. Okay. You know, people attacking the, and the art crew, you know, creative people, creative minds. But... Uh, we have historians here. But, but, the, but these shits... Yeah, so how do you feel, fam? How do you feel? Oh, don't. I ain't wearing my liquor. <laughs> but okay. I, um they're comfortable. Okay. I'll give them an eight out of ten. Okay. I'll give them an eight. Uh it definitely is great. Th you feel this as heel support. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um I know a lot of the youngins, they don't care. Mm -hmm. All they they, they care we didn't about care. we wore some yeah, terrible stuff. Yeah. They don't they don't care how they actually feel. I mean I love sneakers that you know, they be dope as fuck, but when you put them on your feet, they feel like trash, feel like you're walking in. And you don't want to walk in. You, you don't want to like wear them. You walking in some bricks. You and know what I'm saying? If you're a sneakerhead, you want to wear your sneakers and you want to be able to, Yeah. you know. But these have, um, yeah, and they're light. They're light, yeah. They're All right, guys, so for our next segment, which we affectionately call the Dwayne, Roger, and Rerun segment, because we want to bring you what's happening. And for you. our last episode for the first season, we want to bring you something special. Something dope. Um, and we have done a wonderful interview with a wonderful person uh, by the name of T. Smith. And so we will uh, bring that to you right now. All right, everybody. Welcome back. This is 
Jamal Arabia. I'm Fever. And today on our <laughs> today on our Dwayne Roger rerun segment, because yeah. we are here to tell you what's happening. This guy is what's happening today. Am I? Yes, you're what's happening today. This is right. T Smith, everybody. Representing Get up for T Smith. Ah! Woo! Uh, T -Smith. Where you represent from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. For those of you who don't understand this new way of spelling, <laughs> this is Brooklyn. This is a Brooklyn night right here. Yes. Uh, Born we, and raised. we have been talking about um, who we wanted our first guest to be, and it was a unanimous decision. Unanimous between two people, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, we definitely want to um, to get you on here and, uh, and to that. pick your brain. Damn, that's special. Thank you. Want to pick yeah, your yeah. brain. Thank so you. if you could just give us a brief, a brief background of yourself. Uh, who you are, where you from, and what do you do? Yeah, I felt like this has always been difficult for me. For me. You know when you do so many things, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I, my, like my span of things that I do, I make shirts, I <laughs> yeah. shoot cameras, I produce shows. Um, okay. But to sum it up, basically from a child I've been a photographer and then uh, my father gave me a camera when I was nine, so mm. he put the camera in my hand okay since nine years old and then uh, my step pops put the video camera in my hand okay so mm. I started um you know shooting video and stuff like that and then after high school that's when I think things kind of started just start for me my first thing out of high school was I went on tour with the food snicker mm. Mm. oh wow so um shout out to Jimmy and, and my dude K Mel they um they was a group and I, I was they was just opening at Snickers. Okay. So I went to high school with them. So uh, after high school, that was like the first thing I did. We went on. They went on tour with them, and they brought me along. Okay. And that was like immediately. That was the summer after high school. Oh, nice. Graduated. So that was the first thing, and then um, and then the first time I ever got on set, and I know I ain't explain exactly what I do, but I'm leading up to it. Okay. But um, the first time I ever got on set was Malcolm X. Wow. Um, 1991 first time on any set wow but and i, I have to it's back legendary. it up just <laughs> i gotta back it up even just a little Legend, bit just right. so you know how ill that is is that um the first movie that i ever went to see by myself was school days okay okay and i must have been like 14 about 14 and then i walked out of that movie theater with a different like understand or what I what it is I want to do okay you know what I'm saying because um I was always in the cameras always in all of that but I don't I don't think I tied in me doing this as a career okay you know what I'm saying yeah. I think it was just something that I did because my father did it he taught me I mean when, when I was doing that with my father he was you know bathroom mm -hmm. Uh, chemicals, mm, black the, balloons, the old the red light. Oh, okay. Like that's what I yeah. came from. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And um, so you know, in turn, um, on clockers in '94. Mm. So it's just ill that Spike was somebody that was like somebody I looked up to, and then yeah. I winded up making a path to work. Yeah, that's with like them. a full circle. Now let me ask you: you you mm. from Brooklyn, yeah. or did you live anywhere in the vicinity of Spike? No. 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 I'm, I'm no, from okay. East New York, Brooklyn. That's okay. where I was born. I was raised in, uh, born in Kings County Hospital. And, um, born in Kings County <laughs> Hospital. And, um, lived in Brownsville first three years of my life and then moved to East New York. My yeah. family moved out there. I've been in East New York all my life up until adulthood and then I moved to Bed Stuy as an adult and I've been in the sky okay. the whole time until I left Brooklyn. Now we in Jersey, oh, yeah. coming out. <laughs> but um, yeah. so yeah, uh, uh, um, it was the extra Malcolm X. Okay. First time ever. It was an interesting story, real quick. I know I want to be too nah, long. No, 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 no. But Go. um, so I was in Baruch College. Okay. I went to Baruch College the first year. Then I went to Kingsborough. But um, some people that I knew, you know, we always heard that Malcolm X was being shot. It was a big deal in the city. Yeah. But um. I ain't know nothing. I ain't had no connections or nothing. I ain't think. Right. Friends, some friends were being extras. Okay. And what winded up happening was I was like, yo, let me come with y'all see if I can get in. Uh -huh. I went. This is an interesting fact. I went um, to the armory on 145th Street. Got on the line. They said, yeah, we need extras. So I was like, all right, man, I'm in. Interesting fact, which I'm going to get back to. Is the person who checked me in that day is the person I wound up working for, casting. 
later, oh, wow. later on. Oh wow. Years later. Years later. Because that was 91. I didn't start interning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so yeah, I did that. Got it, got on set, but well, got to Armory. That was four o'clock. Four AM, twelve hours later, is when I finally they brought us on a set. Alright, so four AM, get on set. Right. Um, I'm just amazed. I'm just my mind is blown. Yeah. You know, I was already a big fan of Spike. He was like, my inspiration for the whole thing. And then here I am on on his set. You know what I'm saying? So I had a chance to see how the set moved. Yeah. So the scene, right, was on 125th Street at this train station. On, um, I guess where the Metro North, whatever goes, whatever that big train station. Okay. So they, they, me and my homegirl from school, they put us together. They put us, um, you know, they put us in place or whatever whatever by the way side note i saw these guys wearing jackets that said juice on it mm. i didn't know what that was at the time because i don't if you know that um ernest dickerson was the dp of malcolm x yeah he was also the director uh, they had mm -hmm. already shot juice yeah. by that time okay, okay. Yeah. but um so but like so that's what i mean i'm i'm seeing guys wearing juice jackets i was like what is this juice thing but anyway, um, so yeah, they put us in, you know, put us on it by the train station. And they say, okay, when you come out, you're going to walk out the door. You're going to walk this way and walk across the street. All right, cool. So we sitting there chilling, just amazing. Boom, boom. Then this dude, man, like, come, they put some, they, some, they bring some dude in, got a purple suit on, big ass fucking hat, all this other shit. I wasn't paying attention. Um, they standing right next to me. I wasn't paying attention. My homegirl was like, it's fucking Denzel. Mm. Wow. It was Malcolm X. Wow. So that two hours, I'm. This Star is Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We sitting there waiting. They sell action. We walk. We talking to him throughout the whole. About two hours, we did that scene. Mm. I'm sitting here with Denzel on my first time on, the, on set, the set, watching him be Malcolm X, get into his mode, doing all that stuff. We talking to him. Wow. We, we referring to him as Malcolm. Wow. Not um as Malcolm, but not Detroit Red. Yeah. And um. Man, you can see, and you go in the movie, you can see the scene. We walk right behind him, walk right out, and boom, boom. He comes, because if you remember the scene, that's when he first come to Harlem for the first Okay. Mm -hmm. And he strut, As, um, got yeah. strut on. He got, the, he got the purple thing yeah, on yeah. and then he walked right out. So that that was the first scene. So after that, my mind is blown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All dreams How could still. it not? Already, huh? All yeah. dreams still. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm from, so that was 91. 92 i was working at a sneaker store and it just happened that you remember ed, ed and dre was on the radio at that time okay mm -hmm. and so um the, the guy that owned the sneaker store alan the guy that owned the sneaker store i worked for bought some ads on the radio so i guess he had he hooked up dre or whatever dre came to which regina king by the way he, he came to the store she got some beautiful eyes too that's for some eyes they look at her. Wow. But, um, we talking about Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. Right. Yeah, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. Not, not, not Dr. Dre. Not, 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 <laughs> West Coast, Dr. Dre. not West Coast Dre. <laughs> not West Coast Dre. Yeah. So he bought, so, you know, he's talking about, he, he was talking, he had this movie, that, Who's a the Man they was doing. He was like, oh, you're doing this movie, Who's a Man? I was like, oh, okay. I was like, um, can I be an extra or something like that? So Dr. Dre called whoever, which I'm a, some, the same person who checked me in at Malcolm X. Winston Sinclair, she was the extra cast director on that. Okay. So he gave her my number, um, and she called me, and I was an extra in um, Who's a Man okay. for a couple of scenes throughout mm. that whole taping movie. So I was on set a lot for that. All right, boom. Again, move forward. That's 92, 94. Um, I'm in, I transferred to Kingsborough College, and I'm meeting um, different people. And this one dude that I got cool with, and I don't remember his name, if I see him, I won't remember him or nothing, but he told me about, you know, he's like, Spike Lee's doing internship. Uh, wow. I was like, oh, word. And then he had the info. He gave me the info. I applied. Mm. I went to this test. I'm talking about with NYU students, film mm. school students, all this other shit. Yeah. I didn't go to none of this. I just knew film. Took the test. All right, cool. Weeks went by. Called him. I'm like, yo, what's up? And it was like, yeah, you scoring like the top five mm. of the <laughs> test and stuff like that. I was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so I got wow. the internship. So I interned on Clockers and from there, wow. you know, meeting people, boom, boom, boom. Meeting again, Winston Sinclair, who I met two times prior, but I ain't, you know, we didn't get cool like that. Yeah. Um, so got cool with her through the shooting of Clockers. After Clockers, um, I was a location assistant on Dead Prez right after that. That was right after. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Dead President, that was an ill movie. Um, Hughes Brothers. And yeah. then, um, yeah. 
So then I started hanging around her office more on that. After that, I've been doing casting through all the 90s after that working world. Wow. So casting yeah. on all the Spike stuff from there. Um, we worked with Spielberg on Amistad. We did a casting on um, Debbie Allen, uh, hired us back. Oh, wow. um, Hype Williams, I wound up doing videos for Hype Williams, casting that. Um, wow. Chris Robinson. I think we did a Paul Hunter video. Wow. I don't remember. <laughs> So, yeah, so Brent I didn't Ratner, even know Brent this. Ratner, I didn't even know that this, um, this, this that was an, another one yeah. of your avenues as far as casting for yeah. the people that understand. Mm -hmm. You want to summarize? Yeah, just what, small, casting. Yeah, so, ca definite, so, small definition of casting is casting. And movies is casting and is extras casting. Two, two, they all in the same thing, but they're two different things. Casting is principal casting. That's uh, for example, we worked on Belly. We did the casting on Belly. So like we are the ones that went got Nas, you know, did the readings and stuff, got the, you know, did the casting calls and all this. Okay. Extras okay. is the same thing in a sense, but you're just doing background. Okay. okay. So opposed to getting the principal actors, a scene may have, um, we did some of Sam's scene, had to get 1,500 extras. Mm. Mm. It was the one where they found him and they brought him in yeah. and they, um, that was in Brooklyn. That was, so we had to get 1,500 extras. So that's the difference between casting and extras casting. Right. You're doing the background actors and extras casting and casting and putting the, the people that got the lines and all that stuff. Okay. So we, we as ca as a casting department, we handle all the deal memos, the contracts, the records and all that, dealing with wow. the agents, the managers, of, of, um, the actors and stuff like that. What was your most, I don't want to say favorite film experience, but the one that stands out to you the most? Yeah. I'm a star, Steven mm -hmm. Spielberg. Really? Mm -hmm. Because that was four months straight. We were supposed to do six day weeks. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do seven day weeks for three, four months. Wow. Um, it was a period piece. So we had to do, we had to, first of all, we was in Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. In the middle of nowhere. So, you know, a lot of days we had hundreds of people with extras and stuff, and they all, it was a period piece, so they had to have authentic looks and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. I got video footage I could give y'all, too. Uh, we was in the news and all types of stuff. Wow. But, um, it was, it just was a grueling thing, but it was Spielberg. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I had a chance to meet him, shake his hand, all that other stuff. Mm. But wow. that was probably the most grueling, but most, you know, illest thing. So we've had conversations before about film being considered an element, one of the elements yes. of hip hop. Yes. Let's talk well, to, the talk lens. To, right. <laughs> to the be lens. specifically the lane. Okay. Because so let's talk about that. So this is the thing. The DJ needle mm -hmm. is equivalent to the lens to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like we would not have seen people break dancing we would not mm -hmm. have seen the graffiti mm -hmm. we would not have experienced um you know everything that time if it wasn't for the photographers the videographers mm -hmm. of that time yeah. right and my whole point uh, of saying all of that was just to say i mean the lens yeah. itself encompasses photographers and videographers so with that being said it's like the lens if anything to me might even be more important than the, the dj needle the DJ needle, because <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to play the music, but yeah. the, the camera lenses got all the elements. It, it you does. get what I'm saying? I, like, I definitely yeah. agree because you know? the the camera, the video takes it mm -hmm. states and beyond yeah. uh, the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. You and know, it's able to capture all of the elements at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the showcase mm -hmm. because we all know that the world is pretty much on that hip hop style that started yeah. mm -hmm. where it started yeah. mm -hmm. and the film is able to present that to the world yeah. for you to dress like yeah. Run DMC, yep. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, that's what I'm saying, you wouldn't have got all like, that just by listening to the have. music. No, nah, nah. you wouldn't have. Or looking at an album cover. Sometimes right. they even right. put the people on an album cover, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have... <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, it does. You know it, what I'm it saying? Definitely like, how how would somebody key. in Europe would have known Shell Tour Adidas and all the other stuff? Yeah, how would we know how to move on? Unless we went to a concert. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So... Mm -hmm. I get that, and I and so I. So it should be an element. It should. No, I'm in. I think it's complete totally agreement agree. with you. Mm -hmm. And so, just you having that brief discussion has let you know. Is telling us how, you know, the lens has helped hip hop. Like, how mm -hmm. do you think, in certain ways, like the element of film or the lens has 
done some damage or created some some obstacles in hip hop? There's definitely been moments where there's been irresponsible visuals. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Like there's irres yes. irresponsible yes. visuals. Um, I think I wouldn't call it as much uh, not damage, but culturally, we didn't. We in early in the culture, we didn't shoot all of that stuff. No, these right. were white directors and and mm -hmm. NYU this or whatever, whatever that weren't really in the culture. But since it was so new to us, yeah, and the record labels control everything, they went to their people yeah. to to handle all that stuff. So that's why right. you watch a lot of early cultural um, themes in our videos and stuff. They were something that wasn't even hip hop. It was it was yeah. something that some you know. None, none against white people, but I'm just saying yeah. it was just yeah. some white dude that never liked hip hop, but he was associated with whoever at the record label mm -hmm. that said you do this video do. for so and so rapper, yeah. right? And, and he then didn't know. he didn't know, and then you know, yeah, so it's kind of like we've seen a lot of these visuals of directors trying to adapt or giving their their outlook on what hip hop is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. it wasn't done. The only person like Spike did White Lines. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, Spike did white lines mm -hmm. wow. early, um, but <laughs> around that time it wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't no black directors that was or people from the culture. Not even to say white, just saying people from people the that culture. Even wasn't, yeah. Yeah. That was, people that wasn't was involved. in charge of the visuals of yeah. the culture. Which, Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, so you know, I think it was just that was just an era of transition going into then you know the hype Williams of the world and all of them. So we're actually Rob McDaniel's and the big kid. So Ralph McDaniels and the Big Kid is kind of what changed things. A lot of people don't give Ralph um, the credit. They give him credit, right. but they don't give him credit for the Changes. music video business in hip hop. Because yeah. him and Big Kid started classic concepts back okay. in the day. They were a video production company. They did all the Wu-Tang videos, and mm -hmm. they did, they did, they, I think they did some Juice Crew stuff and all that other stuff. Okay. They were doing all of them videos. Right? Okay. And, um, and... A, 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 a PA that came out of that click that turned his career over is Hype Williams. Hype mm. Williams started under Ralph McDaniel and Big Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's a lot of people don't know that. But yeah. uh, Hype Williams came up out of that. And then, um. Man. So, yeah, I mean, not. You're I don't like think a I walk completely. Walking museum. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm. This is the next era of my life is education, and that's why I'm, you well, know, that, getting into school. That's schools a good segue. Teaching, I was asked. I, my next question was, yeah. what's what's next for you? Teaching, professor. Okay. Um, um, professor of film. I have two curriculums. I'm developing um, a hip hop cinema curriculum, okay. starting from 1983, and then uh, for all, you know, uh, the the. African American film industry is over 100 years old, okay. and we need to acknowledge that as such. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because until about 1960, you had the, um, the Lincoln Motion Picture Company was, uh, um, you know, some black people started. That was the first production company by black people. Okay. That was 1916. So before, since they established themselves as a legit production company, that's when, to me. The black film industry started. started. Okay. Yeah. You get what I'm exactly. saying? Yes. Yeah. So you know we need to we never acknowledge that. Right. As such, because you know you'll look at Hollywood and say, oh, the Hollywood film industry is 150 years old or yeah. something like that. But the African American uh, uh, film industry is 100 yeah. over 100 yeah. years yeah. now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We need to keep that in mind. And uh, then Oscar Michaud came in, and then you know just started doing Paul Robesons and all of them okay. started yeah. doing all of that thing and then there was a gap um where it's just from like i would say from 50s to like black exploitation 70s right it was a small gap where you wasn't really seeing too much and then the black exploitation um y'all got me talking all this off. film history nah, uh, man. Uh, Mel, off, melvin please. van peebles yeah yeah uh came out with um uh, sweet sweet sweet, back. sweet backs badass yeah. song yeah. and then that kind of 73 yeah i was born um <laughs> then that led into no no I'm lying, but um, uh, the spook that sat by the door, for '73. Yes. Mm. So that's one of my favorite that's films. A classic. But anyway, um, yeah. So you know, it just it grew, and then the '70s came, black exploitation, boom, boom. And then um, up to 1983, uh, '83 was Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So Star Wars, um, Def Jam 
was rocking. This was on when Def Jam was popping and all this other stuff. So uh, a lot of people don't credit Russell. Mm -hmm. And um, what's his name? Motown. Um, Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy. Yeah. Last Dragon. And Last Dragon. Yeah. Uh, George. Um, oh, what's his name? Director. Black dude. George. Um, I'm forgetting his name. But anyway. You know, around that period is when you start seeing. This is before Spike. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. Crush Groove, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beat mm -hmm. Street, yeah. yeah. That's all 83, 84. Mm -hmm. Breaking, Breaking One, Breaking Two, both came out the same year. I think that was 84, 85. Um, she's got to have it. Spawned out of hip hop cinema. Yeah. Okay. Mars Blackman's a hip hop. Yeah, he yeah. was already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? No doubt. So, yeah. no doubt. You know, that's a, we all kind of started with Spike, but it's it's really Russell Simmons and Barry Gordy's and all mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Was out there taking their artists and making film stuff and doing all of that stuff way way before Spike even came in the game. So I think hip hop needs to get that credit. Yeah. Of getting that stuff in motion. Being you know part of the black film. Um, yeah. Right. I don't even know if I asked you a question. No, 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 man. You you're doing fantastic. Y'all just get me going. I started this is, dipping in my head. This is and... straight legend right here. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so what what do you want to see from the future generation of filmmakers and videographers um, in reference to how they treat the culture of hip hop and, and black film? I want to see them treat it like a culture you know what i'm saying like um that was the big thing you know, while you know i pushed this whole thing about saying that the um the lens should be an element in hip-hop because you know you got tons of videographers uh -huh. mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying yeah. i've been shooting stuff for years shout out to the dan ones, behind the scenes right yeah. now like we the ones that been behind the scenes just like i said you wouldn't have known what the pumas and all that stuff looked like back in the days mm -hmm. yeah. even to this day it's still all these cats with their cameras their a7s and their panasonics mm -hmm. and they you know cannons and mm -hmm. we're the ones still gathering the information of the culture yeah you know what i'm saying and i think people still take videographers you know they don't they don't give them the respect mm -hmm. i think it's kind of like it's 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 a it's a standard thing. So you think that's now, or you mean throughout your time and experience? Do you think, I think throughout people, the whole time? Because yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we're we're composing shots. We're still doing art. Like, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I agree with it's you. It's motion photography, but it's still photography. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, being at the right places at the right time. Um, um, yeah. Um, awesome. cats like um, uh, why am I forgetting names right now? Photographer dude. Why am I forgetting his damn? I'm at a loss of names all day today. But, um. Joe Scott? No, um. My man, why am I forgetting my people's names? Anyway, just to say that we helped move the culture along, but I don't mm -hmm. think we're respected as a cultural element. Okay. You get okay. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't think what. People don't see what videographers do as art, yeah. they see it more as a service. Okay. You get what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Like they no, you know, you yeah. know, as you're not you, like as if you're not putting any thought or creativity. Yeah, yeah. Into we don't it. look at videographers like producers, like how we look at producers that yeah. make beats. Yeah, yeah. You understand, understand what, what I'm you saying? Mean. But yeah. you know, to compose a dope visual, put it together, I edit agree. it, it's just yeah. as dope think, as yeah, what yeah, a I think the average does. Joe doesn't get that. I, yeah, I, I, they, I, they don't I, have I the agree. same prestige. I agree. Yeah. You know, yeah. editing, yo, you've edited, I'm yeah, the sure, artist, before, yeah. like, I think know? artists, us as artists, we get it because we yeah. know mm -hmm. that, right. you know, it, it takes, takes a creative do. process. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're you not know. just, you're not just, it's not one plus one is two. You're trying yeah. to figure out how to make it yeah. palatable and stuff like yeah. that and make it enjoyable. Right. So I get that. Editing is, is <laughs> um, it's not I tell wheelhouse. people the best way I can explain editing is putting a thousand piece puzzle together. Yeah. Yes. And the, the videography Thank you. and the shooting <laughs> is you making the puzzle pieces. Yes. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So when you shoot, you're that making the puzzle pieces. That's such a good and analogy. And you bring it to the end and this, you put yeah. a thousand pieces that together. That is such a good You have analogy. an idea of what the picture is. So yes. now you 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 know you taking these pieces and now you're trying to make the picture. That is so That is so So that's fantastic. my best ex explanation of what like editing what, is. What? Uh, because I know you, you mentioned a lot of movies on um, mm -hmm. your time with Spike. Um, we ain't even getting and, into television. And, and, yeah, you haven't mentioned television. I yeah. know you mentioned Hype Williams. Yeah. Um, you want to tell the people some of the most famous or well-known videos 
music videos that you have? Yeah, I um, because I know it's a probably just as yeah. doubles the movie. So, so like one movie. one um, I had casted one of the first things I did with Hype was I casted um, Nas if I ruled the world. Okay. Uh, if I ruled the world, right? Yeah. yeah. At the beginning, you see that cop. There's a cop scene and yeah. all that. I casted all of that. that was, Look, see, yeah. I don't that even was me. remember the scene, but he. Yeah. He know the scene because he yeah. did it. Like, right. you know yeah. what I'm so saying? That, um, I'm, right. So yeah, so you have like, um, you have video music box. I remember there was a thing called making moves out of Staten Island. Um, there was um, um, your MTV rap. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rap City. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sucker Free. Yep. Um, anything up. Pump it up, pump it up. up. All right, all right, pump it up. <laughs> Anything else? What else? And I'm the talking box. about the genre the box. of the box. The box. Bobby Simmons, for those that's from New York. I don't know if, uh, where, where I was at in Jersey, I don't know if y'all got it because I think it was more like a um, South Jersey, Philly thing. Mm -hmm. But um, did y'all get, uh, it just slipped my mind, yeah, man. It, just, it, it just was, I, I was letting you talk. It was a and video I, show? It was a video show, mm -hmm. and the host was Mike Elliott. Cause Mike Elliott is still like, he still does stuff like in mm -hmm. the industry somewhere. Yeah. Um. And it was a video show. It was a video show. That was the 90s. It was the 90s. 90s. It, and it was it was it was uh, late night. Mm -hmm. Um. Because we had and this was we also had Urban Expressions. I don't know if y'all ever heard I, of I Urban, heard Urban Expressions. Expressions. Yeah, That's yeah, more yeah. like the underground. Like they'll yeah, play the yeah, videos yeah. that MTV, yeah, BET yeah. wouldn't yeah. play. Yeah. Um. I'm mad. We're gonna move on because I but can't no, remember. But no, but I, I, so I was saying all that. Let's the major brands that okay. have uh -huh. universally known. Yo, MTV Raps, Rap mm -hmm. City, even Sucker Free was a little later. Um, and then Video Music Box. Yeah. Okay. You know, Pump It Up. Yes. You know, yeah. had his run, and then um, there was a New York Hot Tracks. I remember or whatever. But right. so what I'm saying is, I I produce Rap City. Mm -hmm. I produce Sucker Free. I produce. Your MTV Raps when I bought it back in 2011. I haven't worked on uh, Video Music Box, but Ralph is the OG. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Props to him. He had me come out to some of his events to talk at some stuff for him. And um, so you know, I've been around. Like I've been. Uh, my name is part of like when you talk about the legacy and history of hip hop television. Yes. Yeah. My name is on a lot of. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For years. We know shit. famous you know people. <laughs> we know influential That's people. That's great. Yeah. We know There's very yeah. few people walking yeah. around saying they produce yeah, like yeah. all those hip hop shows. Yeah. Like so there might be one or two other people because MTV News has stuff going on, Sway mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Yeah. But um So your childhood on Saturday morning when you was getting up with your VCR tape, because I know I was. Uh -huh. When MTV Rats was coming on, yeah. I had my VCR tape ready. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pausing and, and recording, yeah. trying not to get the commercials, yeah. and I and I still got some of mine. You still got I, all I still got my yeah. MTV rap. Yeah, he doesn't throw away anything. <laughs> I, I, honestly, bro, um, I still <laughs> honestly, man, like you should hold on to that. Yeah, he's that never stuff, getting rid of that. That stuff mm -hmm. becomes valuable after a while. That's yeah, fun. you know what I mean. Um, as stock footage or what have you or whatever that got to record. That's record. It's back. It's, it's back. Okay, yeah. it has stopped. Um, that's that's the you know the yeah. thirty minute mark. Yeah, so okay. Stop okay. automatic. Let me know if I'm rambling. No, 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 no. Let me know if I'm rambling. Because I feel like y'all giving me topping and I'm going nah, all over the place. Nah, we we appreciate all that. Huh? This, this cannon shit. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. thirty twenty nine minutes and whatever and seconds. Then and then they shit, stop. Shit, my cannon only go like ten minutes, and I gotta keep pressing the pull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so um, you know, so when you talk about legacy. Tell him, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm humble to a fault, but but you, you can't take Derek. that away from me. But he is legend, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't take that away from right. me. And then in between all of that, I did face Don't give a shit. Yeah, you know because you know I, I peep you, you know, on, on social media, mm -hmm. and I and you throw sometimes you throw stuff out there, and I'm just yeah. like, yeah. this this dude was behind the scenes of that. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, yeah. yo, Dave Chappelle <laughs> show. Um, there's a couple of moments in the Dave Chappelle show where, like, I don't know if you remember, there was a one with Dave and most Def was driving around. We yeah. just was watching it. I'm, yeah. I'm like, in the back seat. Like last week. Just, I'm in the back in the seat. Back? I'm, I'm the one with the most telling them, like, just talking back to the director and stuff while they drive around. Wow, you can even yeah. see my leg in the back seat hiding 
Wow, uh, and that. So we I was just there. Watched that. We just watched that. Oh yeah, I was there for that. <laughs> and um, somebody posted a clip of um when he was um the crackhead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever when he's doing the dance and stuff. I'm yeah. in that clip. I'm right there standing in front. I've I seen that. You yeah. posted that before, and yeah. I seen that. I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when he's dancing, you know. Stuff I'm Tyrone. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was standing right there. Cats on the side. Is one. Is him. Is one. I was around for all of that. Stuff. Wow! The yeah. first two seasons, I was around for all them skits and all that shit. Damn. Yeah, man, that's yeah, a, that's yeah. that's definitely a ride. I don't jump ahead too, but nah, but because there's still so much before television. that. Television, television. Yeah. I mean, we talk about fade to black. You know what I'm saying? Like I had did in '90s. See, you got it. 2003. Yeah. 2003. Um, Jay was doing a black album. Okay. Um, I had already did Beanie Siegel's EPK, and I did Jay's Blueprint commercial that ran on television. And I did some stuff with Rockefeller by that time. Mm-hmm. So when it was time, remember, if you remember, he was supposed to be retiring. Yeah. So Wait, man. Yeah. You got to go back. You got to go back. <laughs> so the Blueprint commercial, yeah. is that the commercial where he... No, it was, it was the first BET Awards. It was just a graphic because okay. it was just a date. It was a date and a graphic. And it played, uh, you know, a track. This was before the album okay. came out. So, right. so it just, it was just a little sampler type okay. thing. But I still was shit, yeah, proud was to do behind. it. You know, no, no yeah. doubt. Um, no doubt. That was the first BET yeah. Awards too that ran. Mm. But um, and then I did DJ Clues commercial uh, for the professional too. Okay. And okay. So I was, you know, I was in a circle. And then when it was time for him to, um, he wanted to document what was supposed to be the last, the last album. Joint. Um, so, you know, they, uh, Shaka, who was somebody I know even before all the Jay stuff, we was, since teenagers, she, um, said, you know, we need somebody to trust, so they, she brought me in, and, um, so I spent four months, I documented from day one of the making of the Black album to the last day, to the point that I was being woken up in my crib because people was playing bootlegs out, you know, um, out in front of my door so that was a ill thing because I, right. I was in the studio when that stuff was made and to see it travel from that studio at baseline and go out into the ether and now the people on the streets are consuming it right. I saw that whole thing. process mm. wow you know um there's that famous scene with yeah. um when Jay go to Timberland and mm-hmm. load off your shoulder or whatever that's yeah. me shooting that that was my birthday I turned 30 that day so my 30th birthday was in the studio with Jay and Timberland. They was doing dirt off the show. And everybody knows that clip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hip hop, a Every- lot of hip hop fans, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. because that clip kind of mm-hmm. travels. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Without was, the movie, it but it was a big moment. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's me. That's me experiencing that. Like, what was Man. that like for you? <laughs> yeah. That whole thing is a blur. Everything yeah. becomes a blur after a while because you it, it it consumes you so much. Yeah. That, um, well, now you that you're see, out of it, how do you? Yeah, it was like know, once you, you get out of it, then you can you look back. How do you look back on it? Like how dope that was. Mm. I think I'm still reflecting. 15 yeah. years later, this is the this year is the 15th anniversary of Fade the Black release. So I'm trying to get knife. Well, I'm going to North Carolina. I'm trying to get knife for us to do something, a Q and A on the date to um to do. I'm trying to get title to do a doc, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. He's talking about Ninth Wonder. <laughs> so, Not so just, with that, I mean, knife tells you the know, story. You know, if you need a, if you need an extra set of hands, it just goes down. You know. The Carolinas is not far. That's all. Nah, I'm saying. Not at all. Put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's so. Yeah, that. So many stories of fade to black. I don't even know where to start with that. This is. This is. I'm just so um, fascinated. Yeah. At yeah. your trajectory from. You know, being nine years old mm-hmm. and having a camera, and then just allow you allowing the universe to take you on mm-hmm. this journey, yeah, yeah, and not yeah, saying no. I'm yeah. sure some things you was just like, nah, that's not for me. But I'm, you something. know, just well, no, not early on, because I got a DVD with just... Akinelli out there somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did, we did a, we did a. You remember DVDs was hot, so yeah. I did a DVD with Akinelli, and this was crazy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we knew what he was in. Well, matter of fact. Still into, but yeah. still into. <laughs> Shout out to Ock, though. Yeah. That was my homeboy. Ock was at my crib the morning at 9 11. We was looking at the Twin Towers from my crib. I was in the stop. And we was watching the Twin Towers go down. Wow. The motherfucker was like, You see this shit? And he kept stopping by the house and he was sitting here like, Oh, shit. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah, um, so I didn't mean to jump off of that, but I mean, um, 
No, there's so just, many just stories. Allowing the, you know, just allowing yourself to just let the journey take you and then look yeah. where you've gone. Look at all of the places yeah. you've been mm -hmm. and Travel. all things of the you things did. you've done, the people you've come in the contact with. The important things in hip hop that you have been a part of. The fact that you were in the back seat, <laughs> Dave Chappelle, because for me, Dave Chappelle, I remember when he said, he was like, you know, this is the greatest job in the world. I get yeah, to yeah. I get to be around people that I admire. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. you could see it, especially in that in that clip, mm -hmm. you see how excited he is just listening the mm -hmm. most, mm -hmm. you know, rapping mm -hmm. and, and, and spitting his bars. And to know that your leg is in the <laughs> shot, because you in the back seat talking to this person uh, and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. But you're making it happen. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I was there the um the other skit. I know we jumped back for, but the day the um what was that skit? Uh, the 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 black black um Ku Klux Klan, remember? Yeah. Or whatever that skit yeah. was, or whatever. Yeah, um, yes. Clay yeah when, when you see he's about to walk First into the episode. room. <laughs> yeah, that was an ill. Way, yeah, way to start yeah. off the, the whole When we was walking, um, when they, when they, you know, he go through the store and then he walks in to, to do this reading in front of mm -hmm. everybody. That's me. I'm opening the door for him to walk through the, uh, <laughs> walk through the thing. And I was, you know, when you're a PA, you, you doing do everything. everything. I know. I've, you know what I'm I've saying? PA'd you're a couple of. doing everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so, grunt work. Yeah, And yeah. you just make sure you're just available for whatever needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I just was always right there. Be in the middle thing, but the PA in and the locations, um, and then the casting kind of put me in this position to be around everything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I'm casting, you're dealing directly with directors, you're dealing directly with, you know, um, you know, the, act, uh, the actors and all that other stuff. So, you, you learn to see how they move, how they, you know, how they act, and how they, I got a good learning lesson about the whole industry from them talking. Okay. So, on this show, uh, we have four segments. Yes. Beats, the sneaks, this is the what's happening segment for this episode, and then we have the rhyme segment. So in the beats segment, yeah. uh, we usually pick an album that we want the people mm -hmm. to listen. It could be new, it could be old, it could be something that we just like, yo, we feel y'all slept on it, y'all yeah. need to revisit it. Strictly you know? hip-hop? Um, for you... I mean, for us, you know, for usually us. it's we usually do hip hop. You know, okay. we always do hip hop because, you know, this is the culture that we, you know, want to promote or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we want to ask you, you know, what album for you, whether it's past or something that's current, yeah. that you feel like, yo, y'all people out there in TV land. I think one album that slept with Sky Zoo's is Salvation. Uh-huh. Um, that is a favorite of mine. Rock Marciano. Uh, what was this album? Is that again? Um, uh, not the... Not, he just dropped a couple. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I was like, which <laughs> one? Like, three of them in like yeah, 18 yeah, months. Uh, and then um, on on some other shit, though, Tidra Moses, Complex Simplicity. That was one of my favorite right. albums. Yes. Yeah, like she, um, I think people ain't jump on that album like I think they should, and she yeah. don't get the credit. That album is phenomenal. And she's she's constantly. Yeah, she's a great writer. She's she's a, she's a dope writer. Yes, she's she a great performer. Well with, um, and she has a lot of respect in the in the industry, mm -hmm. even though her name is not out there. Yeah, cause she she wrote Dip It Low and a couple of other yes. stuff and all that. So yeah, so T J Moses is like. I would South say you need to y'all need to revisit, need to revisit that. that album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then, like I said, Sky Zoo's um, Salvation. Salvation. Not just because I kind of was involved with it, but I mean, just I just felt like that's a slept on album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, his lyricism, the beats, all of that stuff that's on there. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the one with uh, Pete Rock that he's about to drop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm excited mm -hmm. for that yeah. one too. Shout yeah, out yeah. to Sky Zoo. Yeah. All right, so moving from the beat segment to the sneak segment. What's your mm -hmm. favorite sneaker? Uh, I, I, in my older years now, New Balance mm -hmm. 577. I, these are old, but I all got these from Europe. But I mean, like, these are old, but I mean, I just like New Balance. I can't, like, I, I go in the sneaker store, man. I'm going with the intent to buy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm just so overwhelmed with the space shoes. <laughs> uh, looks and all that, yeah. that I don't even know what to do no more. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't know. You're, what you like a is. classic looking. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't went through so many, um, you know, Air Force, Air Maxes, 
Okay. Um, but if if I had to do a universal one, I'll keep going back to just like the different versions of Air Maxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was a Jordan about. dude at one point, but you know, mm -hmm. fuck all that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. um, but now like New Balance is kind of like my thing now. Comfortability, so thing. Yeah, comfortability, right? Yeah. yeah. Goes with everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then also yeah. too, man. I mean, even with okay, the space shoe, the this, the yeah. you know what I'm saying. All of these different types of looks, the strap, the sock the sock shoe yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a person that has all of these sneakers mm -hmm. everybody goes back to a classic sneaker mm -hmm. whatever the classic mm -hmm. sneaker is for you for some people it's the air force one mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying for like um, some is air max yeah. some is I air, air max, max is mine. yeah I, mm -hmm. I got more if, if i have more of i'm anything, a dunk I person have. i love high dunks if oh, i yeah. find a pair of high dunks i'm gonna always get them yeah, yeah i yeah, love yeah. dunks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I like dunks too. Yeah. But I think I think Air Max. I think because yeah, you of Air that. Max. Yeah, because we you know we had a segment on at, we did Air Max. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was that pivotal turn mm -hmm. when we got the bubble in the sneak. Yeah. And that yeah. whole you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. I think that was like, and it's just somewhat affordable. Yep. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. go off the racket like. And a it's Jordan still a does. dope looking and sneaker. And still dope. Yeah. Classic sleek. Yeah. yeah. And you can be an adult. Mm -hmm. yeah, with them yeah, all. With them all. Yeah, <laughs> you know no what I'm doubt. saying? So sneaky, you be like, man, I'm too old for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, Air Max is, is my go-to joint. You know, you can't go wrong with a classic. Can't go Air wrong. Max. See, you can't go. Fever like, gives what us what thumbs good up. Enough for a colorway? <laughs> What's your favorite colorway? Oh, what Air Max? Uh, yeah. Um. My favorite colorway I don't own, but I'm I'm going to say it's one of the originals, and that is the red, white, and the blue. Mm -hmm. Um, they're more so blue, but they come with their red, white, and blue. Got you, got you. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. the infrareds are always yeah, classic. infrared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so for the last uh, segment that we always do, we always pick. Uh, some bars mm -hmm. from anybody mm -hmm. and um, we break them down because you know for us they resonate with us for some particular yeah, reason. don't matter so, when they came out no, don't matter yeah, don't yeah. matter we, I don't think we've done the only thing current we've done is crooked eye Crook. oh yeah. yeah but that was because it was just bananas and crazy and it's yeah. crooked eye excuse me King crooked now yeah, but yeah, yeah, um yeah. so for you what what is what what is a standout 16 for you it's gonna always be and it's not just 16, but Nas's I gave you power. Mm, there we go. I, I think that's Nas's <laughs> best song that he's ever made. I think, his sto you know, he has storytelling ability. I think mm -hmm. he never told a story like he did with that one, okay. metaphorically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I gave you power is my go-to. Okay. That's so, definitely a great go to. That yeah, is a great yeah, go to. Definitely, as yeah, far as yeah. lyrics, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lyrics, mm -hmm. concept wise, we talk about it all the time that, you know, that's what's missing for us. Mm -hmm. That we, uh, a lot of like conceptual songs, stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, put your, I'm a put filmmaker. Your, put your so. brain to work. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then and as a filmmaker, like yeah. right, and then, but then as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. Don't you hear those things and you just start seeing? Mm -hmm. You have clips playing in your head. You start. My my my. I instantly go into what a video would be for a Thank song you. that I listen to. Thank you. Like yeah. even just in my head. I mean, even listen to a song. I'm going through the mental calisthenics of yeah. figuring yeah. out what what themes and and what you looks could bring to and, it. Yeah, like, I tried when I was doing videos for the short period of time that I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I will always tell the artist that this is your chance to take this is this is mm -hmm. your three and a half minute movie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't have your niggas on the block standing you know what i mean mm -hmm. unless that fits mm -hmm. what we're talking mm -hmm. about here ah. but i will always tell them like listen just reach for just throw everything out tell me everything that you want and i'll tell you if we can do it now you know mm -hmm. you ain't gonna be able to jump out of an airplane Oh, but you don't you want to do something fly. better than you know what i'm saying just <laughs> crash in the water exactly so i always i always tell artists that that you know that's 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 your your music video your music video is your first movie mm -hmm. it's your literally your biography mm -hmm. and you should treat it as such mm -hmm. and it's because when i hear songs mm -hmm. i'm always thinking visually mm -hmm. and when there's a good song like i gave you power yeah. 
Yeah, where it's like you have to match the visuals of some song like that, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of shitty videos too. Listen, that don't have nothing to do with the second. Another segment. But yeah, I um, but, but um, my favorite Hype Williams video, just to talk about yeah. Wait, uh-huh. you know, um, um, uh, Mike Geronimo, I'm high. Oh, yeah, I'm so yeah. high. You so I just, high. I just, I'm something about that I video, man. I love like, that it's video. Perfect to, it was just perfect to the song. Yeah, how hype show is nothing special happening no. in the video, okay, but. At it captured time, Mike Geronimo. It captured him and, it and his whole that whole high like, thing. Yeah. But also too, that's when um uh the tilt tilt swing lenses was high okay. at that time. It's called tilt swing lens, and that's how you, you know you, you can see part of it is, is out of focus. Part of a, the the okay. image is out of focus. It's, it's an actual lens that you could tweak these two dials on it, okay. and you can you can um, position the focus where you wanted it. Okay. People used to do the the poor man way of doing it, putting a um, saran wrap and put Vaseline. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Man, that's another way you get that look. But Hype Williams is big on that look. You know, that's, what, that's why that video is just I don't know. It's just it's just one it's of them that video, just fit. Yeah. That's a good mm-hmm. one. And it was always one of my favorites. As a gearhead, what mm-hmm. do you like to shoot with? I'm a gearhead, so um, I always. Me and Dan was just having that conversation. Uh, I think I'm getting more prone to Sony. Okay. I've been a Canon head. See, Canon and Nikon heads are like PC and Mac heads. Okay. Yeah. It's like whatever yeah. you kind of enter the game in yeah. with, that's, that's what you what ride you with yeah. or whatever. So my pops was a Canon okay. head, so I'm a Canon head. But I really like every time I shot with Sony's. Yeah. Um, the A7. Yes. Um, back in the days, I shot Sucker Free on MCV with the FS 100s. What is it? The 100s? The FS? The FS? Uh, the first phase of the FS's. Um, I just love, I don't know, something about that 35 millimeter chip is just, um, Sony's a good, Sony, Sony, yeah, I, doing, I mean, I, obviously, if you got the budgets and stuff, and we talking about bigger cameras, yeah, red, red. Or, mm-hmm. and uh, all of that, but I mean, for like, you know, the grab and go, and, and mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I'm feeling the A7 III right now, okay. I think that's going to be my next camera, that's going to be the first camera to get me away from camera. Okay. Yeah. Like it. Sony, if Sony's able to pull you away from Canon, that's a good camera. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cause Canon got this new e- EOS R, but um, that that whole like you don't have to pay all that money to get all that 4K quality no more. You know no, what I'm saying? You, you got, got Osmos. Yeah, I, I I got an Osmo Mobile. I use my cell phone with it. Uh-huh. Um, I've shot stuff for TV okay. with my cell phone, uh-huh. my Galaxy. <laughs> stuff that went on television, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, that's where we at right now. I don't think it's just, uh, it had to be about what camera, the, the, the P2 cards, and yeah. the Panasonic joint, um, yeah. what was that one called? DVX. <laughs> DVX. That's what I, that's you know, what I started like, on, like, DVX 100, yeah. yep. Those are like wow. standard at them times, but the camera options are They're super bad. wide now, yeah. man. Like, you yeah. know, I don't think it's, you can afford a red, get a red, yeah. but you know. But you don't have to. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? And then at the end of the day, nobody's still transmitting in 4K, 8K, and all this other stuff. So even though you're shooting on it, look, it does look good. But I'm just saying, the technology is still not there yet. Uh-huh. In the sense of, yeah. like, only a movie theater would you get the worth out of okay. shooting yeah. 4K, yeah. Okay. 4K, 8K, and all uh-huh. that other stuff. I mean, it's also good for, you know, resizing and recompositing uh, a shot. If you have that quality that you can zoom in on something, it's still not not okay. quality and stuff. Yeah. But I um, mean, generally speaking, we still shoot HD. Yeah, and we still good. like BET, MTV, all that. We still delivering in HD. You know, nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Sticking to the classics. Yeah, <laughs> so it's still there. All right, man. The legendary. This has been an awesome. Uh, yeah. Dwayne, Roger, and Rerun segment. Man, there's so happening. much that we no, still yeah. even talk I know. about. I know. We didn't talk know. about the fact that Simone headlined with Talib on the. Um, <laughs> but we're not here to talk about it. You know but you know what? But that, but that was something that you did. That was you something. Started, no, yeah. The Renaissance Festival. Had. And let me put this in. Let me just put this out there. That was the first uh, solar-powered 
yes. art and music festival in all of Brooklyn. Not like in just in East New York, because we did it in East New York where I'm from. All of Brooklyn. All like of Brooklyn. I'm working with on uh, uh, with some people with that um the Brooklyn Heritage uh, uh Brooklyn Historical uh Society to try and get that on the books. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nobody can't come around taking claim of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's the significance of that festival. Shouts out and thank you for the opportunity. It was yes, great. Thank you very much, time. man. Man, thank you very ladies much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is T Smith. It's, it's an honor. On Beast Meets and Rhymes. Be in your man. presence, we're, we're, man. We're so grateful. And um, I wish we could sit here and talk all damn day. Yeah, we got more yeah. to talk about. Yeah, I know you definitely do. got me. I talk a strategy. Lot more. Like, yeah. what's the strategy? What are we going to do? What are we going to do with HHDG? What yeah, we gonna that's all we going to have to do a, 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 we gonna have to do a part two. <laughs> Let me do some more stuff and then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, we got you. Go. Well, we'll have we got to we'll be back you. sooner than that. He'll be though. back <laughs> sooner than that. Yeah. Because you yeah. might, Can't be might do some space movie after that. Yeah. And, you know. Who knows at this point? Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, man, ladies and gentlemen, this is T Smith. Give it up for T Smith. Thank y'all for having me. And shout out to Dan Dinkins, the mayor, producing behind the scenes, cameras, uh, all that. Uh, Peace. Nice. guys what and up? we are back for our final segment uh for this episode and our final segment for this season thank you again for rocking mm, with us for the season for the season for the season season one be sneaks the and final rhymes final show the final segment is that um and this is the rhyme segment in this segment we pick some bars and we break them down and to the last compound and and we bring it to you because we feel like you should know about it and and we are gonna tell you <laughs> how fire it is nah and, and. <laughs> all right so this week we are doing joel ortiz we are doing joel ortiz screens screens from his latest project called monday y'all need to check that out because that is a fire project um now hmm. this week we ain't lyrical spiritual right no we're not lyrical spiritual not on this lyrical, one spiritual lyrical, lyrical. um but basically the, the the song is about the song is about children or kids teenagers mm -hmm. and it could apply to anybody though because it, 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 any... a lot of us adults mm -hmm. are addicted to screens yeah we are <laughs> we yeah, are we are the leaders right um <laughs> but the name of the song is screens mm -hmm. and it is about the difference of children of what we did back in the day mm -hmm. growing up uh compared to what the children do now basically um, what our children we, are we doing yeah, now. The, yeah. <laughs> you know how much we were active and outside and how much their face is in the screen yes. he doesn't really pretty talk about too much of how their faces in the screen but he just says what they don't do yes as, is what we used to do right you know um and, and so the, let's 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 get right into the lyrics the let's first go. verse one he just starts off with damn screens that, first of all <laughs> stop right there right stop right the there. the fact that that is the first thing that he said damn screens <laughs> shout out to joel ortiz because it is a great setup because as unofficial and official old heads, I use quotation marks, I know the kids, you know, we starting to sound like our parents. A damn, you know, you know the damn television, you're always watching TV, yes. go outside, you know, stuff like that or whatever. So he yep. just starts off, the beat is on, and then it just drops, and he's like, damn screens. And mm -hmm. then he just, it's hilarious. But it's a setup. I, let me add on to, for those who never heard this either, I'm sure, and you go and you listen, you will recognize the rhythm or mm. the beat to this song mm -hmm. because it is reminiscent of of an old older rap song that you will be familiar with. Yes, I'm not going to give that up. Though. We're not going to give that up. Just, we hope you that you go just listen. go listen to it and figure it out for yourself. We're not here to give you everything. Damn screens. Mm -hmm. Kids don't come upstairs with grass stains on their jeans. No playing tag at night. No more sundown freeze. No more falling off they bike, peroxide on knees. Jeez, I ain't seen a double dutch in years. What happened to Skelly? No more tops hitting squares. I used to front flip 
off the fence, backflip, off the swing. Somebody dared you. You had to to be the playground king. Stop right there. So the thing, the reason why I'm stopping right here just for a second is because <laughs> so many things are nostalgic. He did not give us a break here. No. Um, he literally made me feel old. Um, but no, <laughs> but, but not, not in a bad way. But, but just listen. But it, that was only like six bars, and lit, and l he gave us all of the things all that of we were doing. He, the song we're not even halfway through the song, no. and look how much more things that we do yeah, or did we used to do when we were, you know. And, and then not we to got say into that all children aren't trying to flip off the swing now. Right. I mean, you see children at the playground or you know flipping off a fence, but. You know, I think they probably rather flip in Fortnite first. <laughs> and shouts out to the kids, you know what I'm saying? No like doubt. we're 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 the creators of the fact that they are like this now. But you, the thing that caught me about that first part of the, the verse was when he said um the whole thing about peroxide and then we started talking about yes. when's the last time you what, how many of y'all have cleaned your kids' knees mm -hmm. or scrapes or whatever? How many? When's the last time you used drop, peroxide on your kids? Drop that in the comment. If you had, when's the last time your kid came running in the house like somebody chopped their head off? Right. And then you look down and it was a cut that wasn't even big enough for a band -aid. Right. They've, they've come <laughs> from outside is what we're asking. Yeah. We Not need somebody to... that got cut in the house. Yeah. They was literally outside and they came in and it was blood running down and there was white meat. <laughs> when, white last meat. Time, when last time y'all seen white meat on the kid? <laughs> Drop that in the comments section. <laughs> we is old. The pit. That's Pill hilarious. Yeah, because it's different than when you, you know, you fall off your bike and you, you know, you scrape your knee mm -hmm. and you, you can see your, the skin is scraped. You know what I mean? But you don't have when, the you, horror. when you scrape past the skin <laughs> and then you see that white meat and you and, think it's bone and then suddenly <laughs> yeah and then suddenly it's like you put you 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 you, you squeeze it yes or something like that and then the blood yes. comes over and then you really you really like Woo! ready to yeah <laughs> yes so like when last time y'all did that for y'all kids but we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it pushing yes where was i uh playground king ah somebody dared you you had to to be playground king Walked across monkey bars, rubber mat so far, something crazy drove by. You screamed, that's my car. Threw rocks up on the roof, they couldn't match my arm. And manhunt lasted long, we couldn't catch the quan. Shit. Red quarter water, ask your man to have a sip. Pack an hour later, a quarter bag and some chips. Never would I ever thought our game of kissing, catch and kiss be something that these kids would have to miss. Imagine this. Stop let me, right there. You Let me run that back. Run that back. Something crazy drove by. You screamed, that's my car. <laughs> Everybody remembers, yes. you know, just just playing out, yep. chilling on the stoop, and the cars roll by, yep. and the most f flyest cars, right. you would race to scream, that was my car. Exactly. Or you would, you would it, it really was a game yeah. to see who was going to see the dope car first, first because yeah. you didn't want to say that was my car and then you realize, you know, you're looking from a distance. You didn't want to say that's my car and then when it got down here, you realize it was some it was some whack trash. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was a, a, a hoopty. Right. Or uh, what we used to say was a bomb. Mm. We used to say bomb like, yo, that car is a bomb. <laughs> not the bomb. No. A bomb. A bomb. <laughs> no, not good. Um, same thing with the whole, you know, punch buggy joint. Exactly. You know what I mean? Punch buggy, I got my license, and you really punch somebody. Yeah. These are these are things that children today would be like, how is that a game? How is that entertaining? It was. Shut up. But go ahead. You threw rocks up on the roof. Just anything. Just, Just any anything. Anything. They couldn't match my arm. Manhunt lasted long. We couldn't catch Daquan because it was always some. Somebody that it was, was always too the fast. fastest dude. Oh. The fastest dude. He never. I was like, yo, when, when the person would come around, I'd be like, I'm not playing, because I was slow. Red quarter water. Ask your man to have a sip. I don't even like. No, nobody's. None nobody, of these kids are sipping behind. They're not. Nobody. No, but they're not even drinking quarter water. They're waters. not drinking quarter waters. They're drinking expensive drinks. I ain't never <laughs> like. I haven't seen. I'm from Camden, New Jersey. Right. I'm and I haven't from New York seen City. kids. Mm -mm. With quarter water, you'll see a quarter water at somebody's birthday party because you done bought it at Costco in a big bin. In the yeah, but, but in the grocery store in the bodega. Yo, it's 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 
it's weird. And even though it become like, you know, you come become aware and you don't want to give your children. Yeah. You try, you try sugar to. water, but yeah, but you still giving them sugar water because it was a, expensive it, juice, but go ahead. But it was a time where I bought those coral waters by the box for the house yeah. for the children. Yeah. And then it came a time where me becoming aware where I stopped buying them mm-hmm. and like those other children didn't get cold right. waters, but still that as far as going outside, mm-hmm. you still like, you used to see those on the ground. Like it oh, wasn't wow. nothing. Mm-hmm. Now you can you used to be able to just go pick one up and throw it in your bike right. and make the motorcycle sound with right. it. <laughs> see, kids don't even do that. You know, that's a whole nother Let's thing. get back to these rhymes though. <laughs> <laughs> You know, pack an hour and, 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 and a quarter bag of chips. A quarter bag of chips. We're not talking about the the bag being a quarter filled with chips. Yeah, <laughs> We're right. talking about it being. He just spent seventy five cent, and he got himself a little, you know. Mm-hmm. Now he's a meal. Quarter juice and some bag of he's chips. He's straight. He still had a quarter left to get something else. Damn. He left the house with a dollar. <laughs> he coming home with a quarter. Man. But the, the chorus actually goes phone screen, tablet screen, computer screen, aliens, TV screen. I never seen so many ways to look away from the world. These screens raising your sons, babysitting your girl. So many screens. Everyone say hi. You on a screen. <laughs> you look know, now. We on a screen. Look, we on a screen. And you <laughs> is watching us on the screen <laughs> that we filming on the screen. Know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, Joel Ortiz um, did a really good thing with this song conceptually. Yes. Um, the beat, you know, is very nostalgic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and he's and he's what he's what he's not doing, and I don't want people to get the wrong impression, even young people who may be watching watching this. You know, he's not lambasting the children. No. For not. He's just talking about from his perspective as a forty-something year old man. Like, look, man. I remember when it was like this. And I remember how much fun I used to have outside of my house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. I remember, you know, hanging out with my friends, meeting up, doing stuff. And even though it wasn't the most expensive thing or the most entertaining thing, but he remembers and he just wishes on some level like, dang, you know, I wish y'all would could experience yeah, how much exa- fun it was. Exactly. You know, exactly. and that's not to say that y'all not having fun, fun on y'all fun. screens and stuff like yeah. that. Because I'm sure you are. You guys, have, you have a new way of connecting with your mm-hmm. people. But, you know, from from his perspective and from our generation or whatever, it's just very nostalgic. All of the shit that we used to do outside of the house. Yes. And it, and, and not only that, it makes it, it kind of makes, um, I mean, short sure, times have changed, but it makes you relatable. So, you mm-hmm. know, a father and son, mm-hmm. you know, you'll be able to, you know. Yeah. And you can't send your kid outside if it ain't nobody else outside. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then that'd be, that'd be the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That'd be the retort from the kids. Well, I can't go outside. And ain't nobody, nobody out there. Outside. Right. Nobody outside playing. They almost, they'll go outside and they'll come right back. They ain't nobody outside. They're playing Modern Warfare right. in Fortnite. And I can dig it. Like, you know, I, I, I dig video games also. But, mm-hmm. you know, we are... Our generation is the reason yeah. for the, the popularity of these the video, video games. games. Like, we started out with arcade games. Right, but you... Right, and so we had, you had to go outside. You would meet up at the arcade... Or if you wanted to, you and your homeboy might have the same game console, the same games, but it's not the same if you're not in the same place playing. Mm-hmm. The internet brings everybody together now, so you can yeah. all be home and together at the and same together band, at huh? the same time. So that's you know, I guess that's where the difference is. Mm-hmm. But just being able to go outside and you know eat chips and ride your bike and pick up the little quarter water joint. Well, we used mm-hmm. to uh, we used to use the quarter water joints and we used to use a uh, can soda. Mm-hmm. To make the little motorcycle sound yeah, on the bike no and doubt. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Just crush the can. Yeah. Yeah, no mm-hmm. doubt. You yo, you used to step on the can and walk with it under your foot? What? <laughs> Sit around your foot and be like a tat? What? <laughs> Out here what? saving on Glover in it. What? Yes. Yes. Man, we were strange, but <laughs> it was fun. You know, we yep. was outside. We got a lot of sunlight, a lot of vitamin yep. D. Yup. Use your imagination. Know. Use your imagination. Imagination took you, you know. Yo, took... we used to take a, a tennis ball and throw it against the building, and it, and, and we called it a stoop ball. <laughs> right. And, like, you had to catch it, 
And then, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was like the most simplest game ever. Um, I totally sucked at it. I just watched. I'm not a competitive person. Um, curveball. But just... Even playing curveball. Y'all play curveball in, in New York? Probably, but... Curveball is when you, when, when you got a basketball mm-hmm. and you got a... Uh, you got to hit the curve. It's okay. like you're trying to hit the curve with the with the, oh, and it's like okay. extra points if a car ride by if you do it over top of the car. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Which I look. The crazy thing is, is that that was like the tail end of playing for me. Right. So that really wasn't. I can't say it's not my generation, but it really became mm-hmm. a thing after I stopped playing. Playing, right? You know what right. I mean? Um, but yeah. <sighs> Handball, yeah. handball, all that stuff. yeah. But just, just using your imagination. Just but check out Joel Ortiz's. Just um, ch- check out the whole project Monday. Yes, it's, exactly. It's good. It's a really good exactly. album. And the um, name of the song is called Screens. Screens. Um, for those of you who are like-minded or of our generation, or maybe younger than us, but an old soul, you'll definitely like the song. It's a, it's a dope song. It is very, and it's a very dope album. Yes. Yes, I've been, I've been. It's, it's in heavy rotation. Heavy rotation for 2019. One of the, one of the. In, and he's had like I, I don't. This is probably maybe his. I don't know when he say two. Uh, he definitely has two projects within 2019. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say three, but I definitely know of two. Right. All right. So it's this one. It's the one with um Salam Remy, right? Yeah. Now was Gorilla Goo this year? No, it was, it was last, last it was year. Last year. Okay. Oh, you know ha- what? It might have been the top of this year. It might have been. Wait a minute. Yeah, so it might be. Th- that's what I'm saying. I think it may oh. be three projects. So Joel T's, he's, he's definitely been putting in a lot of work, and it's been quality work. Yes. Um, he's been on his Styles P lately. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, that but, would be hit makers, right? I I don't even know, but yes, it he's definitely on his Styles. Yeah, P. he's been putting out some some pretty dope projects. Yep. 2019. 2019, right? Yep. So it's been so three. Gorilla Glue. The joint with Salam Remy and this joint. Mm-hmm. So he's I think getting... the one with Salam Remy is like Mona Lisa. Or something yeah, I like. think that's what it's called. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I think but that's what it's called. Joel's out here. He out here doing things with them bars, with them bars and them concepts. Yes, all that. But yeah, y'all, y'all. All right, guys. So this is it. This is it. Season one is under wraps. Thank you for rocking with us. Word. Next season. Um. Everybody you know, has been. Yo. Really watching the whole thing. You know, everybody that's been sharing it. Yes, thank um, you. When we post it, you know, you, you share it. Thank you. People that's been sharing it, even we don't post it. Thank you. You know, um, yeah, and all the positive feedback, the people that's dropping comments and, and interacting. Thank and you. We love it. Thank we, you. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yummy. You know I mean? Yummy. You know I mean? So next season, you know, more beats, more, more rhymes. sneaks, more rhymes. And more cultural, what's happening things. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll be we, we definitely coming back better uh, next season. Mm-hmm. We'll be better. Well, we'll, we'll be, be better, be- bigger, and deafer. Yes. <laughs> I don't mean I don't know what y'all thought. You see, you stupid see. fresh blackness. Right. You already see what's going on here. Oh, spotless mind. Spotless mind. We got merch. We got um, merch. All that. You know what I'm saying? You'll see we that. We'll put all we that. promoting merch. Don't forget to visit the Spotless Minds on Facebook. Don't forget to visit Spotless Minds on YouTube. Where else? Spotless Minds Music on uh, Instagram. Uh-huh. Don't forget to visit Simona Radio on Instagram. Okay. Don't forget to visit Fever D. Rice on Instagram. One more time. Fever D. Rice on Instagram. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Yo, it's been a blast, man. We um, you know, we came out here to, you know, do something different, uh, with no yep. expectations, but it's been one hell of a ride and we yep. can't wait to see you guys next season. Uh, we will definitely be putting out an announcement when uh season 2 will be up. Um and you'll probably see us before then. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll probably, you know, still be Hitting you with little snippets, little comments, yep. little content. Be on the lookout for Simone Arabia's project. Be on the lookout for Fever D. Rice's uh, project. Yes. Yeah. Projects. <laughs> Be on the lookout for my beat project. Mm. Be on the lookout for my album or EP or whatever I decide to do. But it's coming soon. Coming soon. Out here. You know what I'm saying? From, and we out here. And we out here. And we in here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Shout out Love to everybody. You. Peace. Love, Love and hair grease. Hair grease.
Um, Spotless Minds. Spotless Minds. Signing off. Signing off. Make sure, make, make sure we edit this like so where like it goes offline. Okay. Like, 